Seals are some of the most extreme animals on the planet, uniquely adapted to survive some of the harshest environments and deadliest predators. Leopard seals are the only pinniped that regularly hunt warm-blooded animals, with powerful jaws that can open more than 160 degrees. Crab-eater seals have the most specialized teeth in the carnivore world. Hooded seals have this, a large inflatable balloon in one of their nostrils, which males use to communicate and display sexual dominance. Yeah. And southern elephant seals are enormous. Males can be 20 feet long and weigh up to 8,800 pounds. And here is a video of a juvenile elephant seal attacking a pickup truck. Yes, this is a juvenile. He still has a lot of room to grow. However, orcas and false killer whales are one of the few animals that prey on elephant seals. This puts seals in a precarious place on the food chain. They are both top predators and an important prey item for apex predators like orcas, great white sharks, polar bears, and even some wolves like the sea wolves of Vancouver Island. I'm KP, a marine biologist with 15 years experience working with marine mammals like harbor seals who have evolved some incredibly efficient reproductive strategies in order to thrive in harsh environments and their unique ecological niche. One of these adaptations is embryonic diapause or delayed implantation. Pausing the pregnancy allows seals to sync the birth of their pups with ideal environmental conditions, such as abundant food sources and suitable temperatures. It also allows mother seals to wait until they've weaned one seal pup before dedicating resources to another. To help with this, seals have become some of the most efficient nursing species in the world. Most seal pups are weaned at just a few weeks old. Hooded seals, the ones with the, the horrifying inflatable red balloon in their nose, have the most extreme weaning period of any mammal in the world at just three to five days. Their milk is 60 to 70% fat. Ice cream, for reference, is only like 10 to 15% fat. Yes, I am gonna eat it. This is banana flavor. This provides the pups with the nutrients necessary to gain about 15 pounds or seven kilograms a day and more than double in size. During this time, the mother doesn't eat and loses significant weight as she dedicates all of her energy to nursing her pup. So seals like hooded and gray seals will nurse on unstable Arctic pack ice for safety. This makes these species more vulnerable to rising temperatures and shrinking sea ice. The result is more pups are being born on land where they are easily separated from their moms due to human interference. Or they can get stranded on an ice floe when it breaks apart unexpectedly. This is how hundreds of gray seal pups started washing up on a peninsula in the Baltic Sea over 600 kilometers away from where they were born. Separated from their mums and unable to swim, these pups were carried by ocean currents for days before stranding in Hell, Poland. Fans of my channel know I've spent over 15 years working with rescued and rehabilitated seals and other marine mammals. Most of these animals were separated from their moms when they were still dependent pups. Rescuing these lost gray seal pups is why I've partnered with my friends at Planet Wild for this ad. If you're not familiar with Planet Wild, they're a community-based nature protection organization that's like crowdfunding for conservation. Every month, their community of over 13,000 members funds a new project to protect endangered species, clean up our oceans, or restore forests. Planet Wild documents all of these projects through video reports right here on YouTube so you can see how your contribution helped protect the planet and its animals. They just helped expand and update the Hell Marine Station, a small but dedicated ocean research center that rescues, rehabilitates, and releases these stranded gray seal pups back into the wild. The Planet Wild community funded three brand new seal enclosures, upgraded the round-the-clock monitoring system, and funded seven specialized tracking devices to monitor the seals after release, which you can see in the Planet Wild's video right up here. That means that more and more abandoned seals can be rescued, rehabilitated, and released into the ocean. Giving stranded marine mammals a second chance has always been important to me. It's why I joined Planet Wild. And because I really believe in them, I'll cover the first month's membership for the first 100 people who sign up using my code PASSIONATE10. Just scan this QR code or click in the link down in the descriptions and the pinned comment. You can give whatever feels right for you, big or small, every dollar counts in conservation. 
And the best part is you'll have an immediate impact in nature and see the results in less than 30 days right here on YouTube. There's no catch. You can cancel anytime. No questions asked. Rescued and rehabilitated seal pups are excellent candidates for release. Seals have special adaptations that help them quickly develop the survival skills necessary for swimming, diving, and foraging on their own in the ocean. Their large eyes have flattened corneas that allow them to take in more light in darker conditions. Their whiskers or vibrissae are highly sensitive and can detect subtle vibrations and water disturbances left by swimming prey, allowing them to track fish and other animals even in murky or dark conditions. Studies have shown that harbor seals can follow a hydrodynamic trail that is up to 35 seconds old using just their whiskers. And their high quantities of an oxygen binding protein allows them to store oxygen in their blood and muscles so they can stay underwater for a ridiculously long time. These adaptations make seals exceptionally deep divers. Harbor seals can hold their breath for 30 minutes and dive up to 1500 feet or 450 meters deep, but that's nothing compared to elephant seals who can hold their breath for up to two hours. Northern elephant seals can dive to depths of more than 5,000 feet or 1500 meters and Southern elephant seals to depths of nearly 7,000 feet or 2,130 meters rivaling even the depths that sperm whales can reach. To accomplish these incredible dives, seals will exhale to reduce the amount of oxygen in their lungs and rely on stored oxygen in their blood and muscle tissues instead. They'll slow their heart rates from 100 beats per minute to as few as 10 and shunt their blood away from the extremities to the core functions of the brain, heart, and lungs. The deep ocean is rich in food sources that are unavailable to other animals, but it's also a refuge from predators like great white sharks and killer whales. And elephant seals take advantage of this safety by taking a nap on their way down. And if that sounds weird, it is. Check out this animation by the authors of a study out of the University of California, Santa Cruz. They're actively swimming when they start their dive, but they'll slowly sort of start to doze off as they get deeper. Then they'll slip into a deep REM sleep where they will then flip over onto their backs and spiral downwards deeper and deeper and deeper. They eventually wake up and forage for deep sea fish and squid on their way back to the surface. As always, links to cited sources can be found in the descriptions. Other seals do something similar, although not as extreme. Harbor seals are colored almost like rocks, which allows them to blend in with the sea floor where they'll sleep for 15 to 20 minutes at a time, surfacing only to breathe before they slip back down. And Arctic ice seals will dig breathing holes in the ice that allows them to sleep underwater where they are relatively safe from polar bears. Relatively being the key word. The ocean can be a harsh and unforgiving place and most seal pups don't make it. Only about 50% of seal pups survive their first year. The juvenile mortality rate is even more severe in crab eater seals thanks to leopard seals. Leopard seals are an evolutionary marvel. Their massive jaws, long canines, and sharp incisors allow them to be one of Antarctica's top predators. But their molars are lobed like the teeth of the crab eater seal. Despite the name, crab eater seals do not eat crab. They eat krill by swimming into swarms with their mouths open. Then they close their mouths and push the water out through their unique lobed teeth like a sieve allowing them to filter krill from seawater, just like modern baleen whales. Lobed molars allow leopard seals to do the same, and krill makes up the bulk of a juvenile leopard seal's diet. But as they get older and larger and meaner, <laughs> they start taking on larger prey like penguins and other seals. Most seals have small front flippers and swim by moving their hind flippers side to side, sort of like a fish. Leopard seals have larger front flippers, more like sea lions, these massive foreflippers make leopard seals faster and more agile swimmers than crab eater seals. Up to 80% of crab eater seals that survive their first year have scars from leopard seal attacks. In order to overcome the specializations of leopard seals, crab eater seals also have evolved. Unlike other seal species who are relatively solitary, crab eater seals are remarkably social. They have been documented traveling in groups of up to 500 individuals and can haul out on sea ice in groups over a thousand. They also reach sexual maturity at a very young age compared to other seal species and begin mating at just three to four years old. These adaptations have allowed crab eater seals to thrive. They are by far the most abundant seal species in the world with 10 to 15 million animals 
which would mean that there are more crab eater seals than the population of all other pinniped species combined. Other seal species aren't so lucky. The Hawaiian monk seal is one of the most endangered marine mammals in the world, with only 1,600 individuals remaining. And just this month, three Arctic ice seals, the hooded, bearded, and harp seals were added to the IUCN's red list of endangered species. The primary reason is because of habitat loss, specifically a loss of their breeding grounds. Hawaiian monk seals haul out on Hawaiian beaches to breed and give birth, but these beaches and haul out sites are diminishing because of coastal development, rising sea levels, and dangerous interactions with humans. And we already discussed how a loss of sea ice is affecting the breeding sites of hooded and gray seals who are being swept out to sea and washing up on beaches hundreds of kilometers away. On the positive side, there are things we can do to help these endangered seals. The easiest thing we can do is stuff like giving them space, keeping our beaches clean, and reducing plastic use. We can support rescue centers that give stranded marine mammals a second chance. And you can join Planet Wild, a growing community making a difference in conservation, using my link in the descriptions and pinned comment. Be sure to use my code PASSIONATE10 and hopefully you'll be one of the 100 people who gets their first month paid for by me. And if you want to see Planet Wild in action, you can check out their video on the Lost Gray Seal Pups right over here.